gases. Volcanic gases are probably the least showy part of a volcanic eruption. <clears throat> but they can be one of an eruption's most deadly effects. Most of the gas released in an eruption is water vapor and relatively harmless. But volcanoes also produce carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, fluorine gas, hydrogen fluoride, and other gases. All these gases can be hazardous, even deadly, in the right condition. In addition, exposure to acid gases, such as sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and hydrogen chloride, can damage ice and mucous membranes along with the respiratory systems, and under extreme conditions can lead to death. Volcanic gases can also severely damage uh, vegetation. The term volcanic gas identifies the fluid gas phase released by active volcanoes. Finally, soil gases dominated by carbon dioxide make the diffuse low temperature emissions occurring through the flanks and faults on active volcanoes. So how are volcanic gases measured? For example, an instrument that detects carbon dioxide can be installed on a volcano and configured to send data continuously via radio to an observatory. Another way is for um, sulfur dioxide in volcanic clouds can also be measured from space with instrument aboard satellites. So how a volcano releases volcanic gas? As the image shows, as magma rises towards the surface and pressure decreases, gases are released from the liquid portion of magma and continue to travel upward and are eventually released into the atmosphere. Large eruptions can release enormous amount of gas in a short time. The most common volcanic gas is water vapor, followed by carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. Carbon dioxide. <clears throat> carbon dioxide is not poisonous, but it displays normal oxygen bearing air and is odorless and colorless <clears throat> because it is heavier than air. It collects in depression and can suffocate people and animals who wander into pockets where it has displaced normal air. It can also become dissolved in water and collect in lake bottoms. In some situations, the water in those lakes can suddenly erupt, huge bubbles of carbon dioxide killing vegetations, livestock, and people living nearby. This was the case in the overturn of Lake News in Cameroon, Africa in 1986, where an eruption of carbon dioxide from the lake suffocated more than 1,700 people and 3,500 livestock in nearby villages. So the overturn of Lake News is also related as a limnic eruption. A limnic eruption, also known as a lake overturn, is a rare type of natural disaster in which dissolved carbon dioxide suddenly erupts from deep lake waters, forming a gas cloud capable of suffocating wildlife, livestock, and humans. Sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. They are both sulfur-based gases, and unlike carbon dioxide, have a distinct acidic protein egg smell as a characteristic. Sulfur dioxide can combine with water vapor in the air to form sulfuric acid, a corrosive type of acid. So, health hazards can range from minor to life-threatening. Exposure to acid gases like uh, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and hydrogen chloride can damage ice, mucous membranes along with respiratory system, and their extreme conditions can lead to death. 
Both acid irritates soft tissues as eyes, nose, throat, lungs, etc. And when the gases uh, forms acids in large enough quantities, they mix with water vapor to form fog or volcanic fog, which can be dangerous to breathe and cause damage to the lungs and eyes. If sulfur-based aerosol reach the uh, upper atmosphere, they can block sunlight and interfere with ozone, which have both short and long-term effects on climate condition. So, in addition, long-term long exposure to volcanic fumes or volcanic gas may aggra aggravate existing respiratory problems. It may also cause headaches and fatigue in regular healthy people. One of the nastiest, although less common gases released by volcanoes is a fluorine gas. This gas is yellowish, brown, corrosive, and extremely poisonous, like carbon dioxide. It is denser than air and tends to collect in low areas. Its companion acid, hydrogen fluoride, is highly corrosive and toxic and causes terrible internal burns and attacks calcium in the skeletal stem. So for example, in our image, a volcanic eruption is both an international pollutant source and an international hazard. The United States Geological Survey states that volcanoes produce a wide variety of hazards that can kill people and destroy property. A large explosive eruptions can endanger people and property hundreds of miles away and even affect global climate. During a volcanic eruption, a mixture of gases and partic particulates are repelled and expelled. The discharge of gases can also occur between major eruption events. Volatile gases such as hydrogen fluorine and carbon monoxide trickle out of cracks and fissure along the surface of the volcano. Cracks known as fumaroles along the surface of the volcano allow the seepage of gases above Earth's surface. Water vapor is one of the major components in the outgas material from an eruption. Water vapor accounts for about 80% of the gases emitted, which is released as steam. 79% of water, 11.6% carbon dioxide, 6.5% sulfur oxide, dioxide, and 2.9% of lesser constituents are the average concentration of volcanic gas. Volcanoes, as mentioned previously, have varying eruption types. Each volcanic eruption, even from the same volcano, has different concentration of outgas aerosols and other pollutants. Even after visible gas or acid has dissipated, fluorine can be absorbed into plants and may be able to poison people and animals for long periods of following an eruption. After the 1783 eruption of Lucky in Iceland, fluorine poisoning and famine caused the deaths of more than half the country's livestock and almost a quarter of its population. So in addition, during active volcanic eruption, fluorine can be absorbed by plants if fluorine transferred from soil to roots and then to above ground parts or absorbed by leaves from the air. At low concentration, fluorine can cause eyes and nose irritation but it can cause death in high concentration. In addition, the lucky eruption and its aftermath caused a drop in global temperatures as 120 million tons of sulfur dioxide was spewed into the northern hemisphere. This caused crop failures in Europe and may have caused drought in North Africa and India. Signs of an impending volcanic eruption. 
The accumulation of ions of eruption build volcanoes up around a vent that connects to molten rock deep within the ground. There are many specific signs that a volcanic is erupting, in addition to a flow of lava down its sides, earth tremors, the release of gases, and the expulsion of hot lava are some of these indicators. In addition, uh, these signs may include very small earthquakes beneath the volcano, slight inflation or swelling of the volcano, and the increased emission of heat and gas from vents of the uh, volcano. Number one um, signs is the increase in the frequency of volcanic quakes with rumbling sounds occurrence of volcanic uh, tremors. So if we are close to the active volcanoes, we also uh, frequently detect or experience the so-called volcanic tremor, which is referring to a long duration or more or less continuous volcanic vibration of the uh, ground surface near the active volcano. Next, we have the increased uh, steaming activity. Change in color of steam emission from white to gray due to entrained ash. So, increase in steaming activity may result to hydrovolcanic eruption. That is um, pertaining to the generated from the interaction of magma or lava with water. This conversion of water to steam is typically associated with a significant increase in the volume of water molecules depend on the pressure. Next, we have the crater glow due to presence of magma at or near the crater. According to uh, Quick Pebox, the crater glow was uh, like caused by hot magmatic gases hitting the overlying atmosphere. The uh, crater glow suggests the possibility that remnant magma may be quietly rising to the surface vent of a volcano. Number four, ground swells or inflation. Ground tilt and ground fissuring due to magma intrusion. Changes in a volcanic surface will appear as swelling of ground surfaces and cracking which can be caused by magma, gas, or other fluids movement in the Earth's crust. Probable intrusion of magma at deep can lead to magmatic eruption sustained increase in sulfur emission rates, ground deformation, and swelling. Next, we have the localized landslides, rock falls, and landslides from the summit area, which uh, attribute to heavy rains. A landslide is a mass movement of rock fragments, soil, and debris downslope. This can weaken the slopes of the volcano, leading to a landslide, or cause a volcanic earthquake. Volcanic earthquake, therefore, can trigger volcanic landslide. Next, we have the noticeable increase in the extent of drying up of vegetation around the volcano's upper slopes. In the upper slope, uh, slope portion of a volcano, plants are destroyed over a wide area during an eruption. The good thing is that a volcanic soil is very rich 
So once everything uh, cools up, plants can make a big comeback. Next, we have the increase in temperature of hot springs, Wells Crater Lake near the volcano. So hot springs of various kinds can be found near active volcanic areas. From the viewpoint that hot springs are one aspect of volcanic activity, heat flow and the rate of discharge of chemical constituents transported with hot springs are noteworthy factors relevant to the study of volcanic phenomena. Noticeable variation in the chemical content of springs crater lakes within the vicinity of the volcano. So this explains that crater lake within the vicinity of the volcano are typically the most acidic with pH values as low as 0.1 means at very strong acidity level. Normal lake waters, in contrast, have relatively neutral pH level values near 7.0. For example, in Mount Pinatubo Crater Lake had a pH a level of 1.9 in the year 1992. Next, drying up of, of springs or wheels around the volcano. For example, in Mayon Volcano eruption, small spring drying up quickly and the drop in the water output of Budiao Spring, which is the Budiao Spring, is one of the main source of water supply for some people and household, has dropped to 7,740 cubic meters of water from uh, 8,100 cubic meters of water. Development of new thermal areas and or reactivation of old ones. Appearance of Solfatara. Solfatara is a natural volcanic steam vent in which a sulfur gases are the dominant constituent along with the hot water vapor. It is present in many high temperature thermal areas mainly in those associated with volcanic activity. For example, the Circum Pacific Belt has the um, Solfatara natural uh, volcanic steam vent. Volcanoes are scattered from north to south. The Philippines, uh, in figure, it shows the uh, numerous Volcanoes almost parallel to the trenches that define the territorial bounds within uh, with the country Those are coded in green Indicate dormant volcanoes Which based on their history Have not shown or may never show any signs of activities in terms of tremors gas emissions and heat releases in the near future other volcanoes are known to be active within the last 600 years and these are indicated in red uh, triangles. So volcanoes are not randomly distributed over the Earth's surface or in the Philippines. Most are concentrated on the edges, edges of continents, along island chains or beneath the sea forming long mountain ranges. The current active volcanoes or the currently active volcanoes in the Philippines are found on several corresponding volcanic arcs as you can see in our uh, map which can be uh, simplified into uh, major north to south trending arcs the Luzon and the Mindanao volcanic arcs the volcanoes of the Philippines are produced at the junction of the Philippine tectonic plate and the Eurasian plate PBOX has been closely monitoring the active volcanoes to alert communities in the immediate vicinity of any danger. The last type of volcanoes is considered potentially active, shown in the yellow triangles. 
as you can see in our image, which are categorized by volcanologists and a geologist as those that are not currently exhibiting signs of eruption but have a high possibility of any form of seismic activity in the near future. So the significance of PVOX, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, is a service institute of Department of Science and Technology that is principally mandated to mitigate disasters just like earthquakes and volcanic eruption and other related geotectonic phenomena. Some of the numerous active volcanoes are traversing the entire country are considered higher in risk. PIVOC has listed down these volcanoes that may cause disaster to nearby communities and properties because of the potential strength in their seismic activities. So as you can see in our uh, map, the Philippines uh, lies with in the ring of fire, means a region of subduction zone volcanism surrounding the Pacific Ocean. So this explains that the distribution of most volcanoes in the Philippines. So for example, in uh, 1991, Mount Pinatubo eruption as well known to be the most violent eruption in the 20th century. Philippine volcanoes are classified as active, inactive, and potentially active. 22 historically active volcanoes are distributed all over the archipelago. Since volcanoes are not present in some provinces, uh, these particular areas have no risk to volcanic eruption. The top 10 provinces at risk are Kamigin, Sulu, Biliran, Albay, Bataan, Sorsogon, South Cotabato, Laguna, Camarines Sur, Batanes. So Kamigin has the highest risk because the land area is so small such a volcanic eruption and affect the whole province of Kamigit. Sulu ranks second because it has the most number of active and potentially active volcanoes. Here in Aklan, we don't have a specific high risk activity of volcanic eruption. So are we are lucky to have this kind of level of risk in terms of volcanic eruption here in Aklan.